Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're going to have ourselves a 4v4. That is right, a 4v4. It's been a while, but we shall do one of those. And it's going to be in Angermwand. Can't really look at it from here too much. But it is a new map that got released in the uh, latest patch, and it is pretty awesome looking. It's very industrial zone, so there's a lot of uh, buildings that you can see. There's railways cover and such. You can see the layout right there where, uh, you know, three uh, victory points spread, are spread across essentially the center in an angle. And we have fuels at the uh, very edges of the map, which look to be just, well, essentially a meant for each side to hold. And you get vehicle play and then you have munitions flanking the center of the map on each side. So should be interesting. So anyways, let's introduce our players regardless. So starting off in the blue, we have Cosmic Green playing for the Germans. Uh, let's actually open this up for a little bit, even though it looks ugly, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, Cosmic Green. Actually, no, let me take that off. It's too ugly to look at. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yes, Cosmic Green, again, is the uh, the blue German. In the yellow, we have Lopido. Again, German. All of them German, so I really shouldn't be uh, having to mention it too much. In the cyan or uh, teal color, we have Marls. And lastly, in the green, we have... Sch Schuldengrisch. Now, I do apologize to the players if I'm butchering your names, but I'm really not going to mention your names probably the rest of the game. I'm just going to look at colors. Uh, so anyways, yeah, those are the uh, the Germans. And uh, for the Soviets, we have in the red, leading the enemy is Mr. Square. Two squares, two dots, and something else. Uh, so yeah. His ally in the uh, pink or purple is Mr. Valiantius. Following up in the orange, we have Brew. And lastly, in the poop flavored color, it is Who's the Boss Season 2. So there we go. So we hear small engagements in the center. We have uh, combat engineers running into some pios for Teal. Uh, teal actually. Well, never mind. Wow, that was my. Uh, that was my mistake. I was going to say he was laying down some S minefields because I saw that and I thought that was one of those signs. But no, never mind. So anyways, uh, Teal forced to retreat from the center. He does set up an MG-42 right in front. Nice little house here covering that uh, that victory point. I would assume this building over here as well. Yeah, this building as well has those ability to cover. So each, each side is able to do so. Combat engineers pushing forward. Conscript's getting a little bit of a flank. We have mortars firing, but those are friendly mortars that are not really able to hit the uh, house. More than likely actually hitting their friends. What What is those mortars? What are those mortar doings? Let me... Was it this guy? Yeah, three friendly kills. Completely off on the shots and actually ends up hitting the other friendly guys. Over on the left-hand side, we see more engagements. We have MG42s out in the open. Assault Grenadiers for green, moving up on top of a combat engineer squad that's holed up in that little shack. They're just getting shot up all over the place. They are inside the house, but they still take a lot of damage, and they're probably going to die. I don't see this squad actually making it out of there. Even if they jump out, they can't actually run through that fence. They would have to vault over this, and essentially they're going to have to walk out through that door. So, yeah, that's a dead squad. Unfortunate for Orange. We'll have a sniper on the field for uh, for Blue. I'm going to keep a tab on that guy, maybe uh, be able to teleport to him every now and then and keep an eye on his kills. Mortar squads behind the lines getting a uh, shot up. One squad down to two men. Forced to retreat, Grant and Pios. In the center, trying to take that victory point. We have a Maxim machine gun in the uh, warehouse kind of thing for poop. And the yellow player goes a little bit past the lines, trying to get on top of those uh, mortars, but ends up having to retreat. The sniper also retreating from the field. And there it goes. Right-hand side, we have a purple player with an MG in that... Well, that's a big guy. Uh, big building. I don't know exactly what it is. But uh, his conscripts up in the front are going for the cap of the victory point, running into some assault grunts. So assault grunts all over the place. In fact, I mean, we're not, not really going to check. I can actually tell you what the doctrines are going to be. For the uh, Soviet uh, side, we are going to see uh, mechanized support tactics, guard rifle combined arm tactics, counterattack tactics, and guard motor coordination tactics. And for the Germans, we have an Assault Support Doctrine, a Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, and two Mechanized Assault Doctrines, as you can see, because we have... Assault Grenadiers for yellow and Assault Grenadiers for green, who are actually currently going all the way to the left of the fuel points. So the uh, German side is actually going to be able to capture two fuel points. That's going to give them an incredible edge. 
We do see a scout car on the field for Orange running into the Assault Grenadiers. Uh, the scout car can actually do quite a bit of damage to them. However, the uh, Assault Grenadiers are too numerous and they'll actually be able to do a lot of damage. They actually hit Sprint and get it right on top of him, but scout car, well, it has wheels, so it's able to actually get out of there rather fast. Mortar being used to cap on the left-hand side for the German players, I mean the Soviet players. The uh, conscripts push into the center. We see a... Uh, uh, bleh, bleh, why am I not able to think? Uh, fuel cache, I actually have it in front of me, and I'm not saying. Being built all over the place for the German folk. And let's see, we have tier 2 going down for uh, yellow, green... And that's about it. So yellow and green, the guys with the assault uh, assault grenadiers, skipped uh, tier one and went straight to tier two. So that's nice little synergy there. Back at the uh, Soviet bases, we have tier two down for orange. We have tier two down for uh, poop. We have tier two as well down for purple. And wait, actually orange has tier one and tier two. A little bit of a waste. And tier two down as well for red. So. Only one player with tier one. Soviet forces, however, are seeming to collapse from the center. They are uh, taking quite a bit of a beating. We have German troops behind enemy lines doing uh, harassive jobs and uh, doing quite a bit. Even an AT gun is, gets turned around to help out in the fight. Grenz in the center running into that Maxim machine gun, but, you know, they're able to pretty much capture the point regardless. More conscript squads on the side getting some shots off on those Grenz. Those Grenz do manage to actually get some damage on that Maxim machine gun, and for some reason, the Maxim machine gun is pointed in the other direction and not looking at this side. That's weird. Looks like the Grants actually destroyed the window that they could have used. I think. I don't know. Right hand side, sandbags getting laid down all over the place. Wow. All over the place here for purple. We hear some vehicles coming down. That is a German scout car for yellow. Getting right on top of those conscripts. Those conscripts are on queued up orders to build sandbags all over the place. They're actually going to take additional damage as they build. The sandbag actually gets destroyed. So the conscripts no longer take additional damage. That's actually lucky for them. So Grandier Squad gets taken down as it tries to retreat from behind the lines. Scout car moving again into the center. This is for green, as those are the two players that went for the Assault Grenadiers. AT gun set up down the road, gets a nice shot off on that scout car. Scout car goes down. Second scout car on the field for green, as uh, scout car on the uh, right-hand side is supported by a lot of Pios. And, well, actually not a lot of Pios. Those are Assault Grenadiers, never mind. 18-8 does go off on the scout car. Conscripts, however, are forced to retreat. Maxim machine gun stopping the approach of the infantry. The scout car gets brought into the fight. A little bit risky there, as the Maxim machine gun can take down the scout car rather quickly. Not too quickly, but, you know, quickly enough. Uh, but we also have another scout car up in the far north. Over on the far left-hand side, we do still have an Assault Grenadier squad, and the Soviets apparently don't really want to go cap that, and that is a big mistake, in my opinion, considering that that's going to give the German players a lot of income to be able to get tanks and, and things. So we see Tier 3 going down for blue. We see Tier 2 going down for teal. I'm not exactly sure why he went Tier 2, I mean, considering what they were doing, but, yeah, well, that's fine. Sniper actually is still alive there for, uh, for Cosmic Green. No real engagements going on. We see the Soviet players just sitting in the center, but unfortunately they're not pushing over to the left-hand side. Finally, we see Maxim machine gun squads all over the place trying to flood into the left-hand side. They're going to run into Assault Grenadier squad. That Assault Grenadier squad will not be able to stop them, not on their own. Maxim machine gun's getting set up in the middle of the road, gets an instant suppression on that Assault Grenadier squad. Assault Grenadier squad now getting pinned down as two Maxim machine guns are opening up on them. They're not going to last very long, but they've done their job, I suppose. Right-hand side, scout car pushing forward. One scout car apparently goes down. Guard squads are on the field with their PTR rest rifles. They managed to take down another scout car, so heavy losses there on the vehicles for the Germans. However, they still have Assault Grenadiers on the field, forcing away the guards. And we see that out on the field now is a Panzer IV. There are 80 guns on the field for the Soviets, so, you know, it's not completely lost, but bad news. Ah, excuse me, I had to sneeze. Uh, Panzer moving over to the left hand side. Uh, do we see any additional things for the uh, Soviets? I don't see any additional tech. 
tier two down for every single player, so they everybody can get AT guns. But the Panzer IV is currently unopposed as far as vehicle goes. It runs into a combat engineer squad. I mean, well, yeah, there was one. Haha, <laughs> I wasn't lying. <laughs> runs into a combat engineer squad and a and a conscript squad. The conscript's trying to retreat. It barely makes it out of there. The uh, combat engineer squad will die if it doesn't move, and it won't, so it's gonna die. Maxim machine gun down the road. Getting some shots off on the infantry. AT gun moving into support. It is in range of the Panzer IV. Panzer IV gets shot right in the frontal armor. Continues to push forward. Big mistake. Mortar shots flying in that direction. Heavily set up defenses here for the uh, Soviets. More shots continue to fly at the eight, at the Panzer IV. The Panzer IV down to about the sliver of hell. That is 5% probably. More One more shot goes off from the AT gun. And it destroys the main gun. Does not kill the tank unfortunately. And it needs some type of follow up. Scout car coming in behind the lines gets right on top of all those mortars. That's uh, three mortar squads, even an AT gun nearby. Turns itself around, gonna get a shot off on the scout car and kill it off. There it goes. But the right hand side flank has actually fallen for the Soviet players. We see a Sunnoth Grenadier squad forced to retreat as a stolen AT gun and a Pio squad tries to make, to make its way back. However, with conscripts with VPS agents right on top of them, the Assault Grenadier squad will go down. Even gets Molotovd, and the combat engineers are chasing down the AT gun, trying to clear it out. No units nearby for support. The uh, Panzer IV looks like it got taken out at some point over here on the left-hand side. Uh, what killed it? Where did it die? Should have died somewhere, but I don't know where it is. And it was here that it was getting shot. Oh, right there. Okay, so it looks like something killed it right there. Ah, sorry. I hate it when it moves like that. Grand Squad. Forced to retreat through Maxim machine gun fire, gets killed. It's not Superman. A lot of troops moving over to the right hand side, still chasing down that stolen AT gun. Pio squad does end up dying as it does not retreat, it just moved back. We have Opal Blitzes on the field, and we have a Panzer IV on the field for Yellow. So Yellow decides to go for Tier 3 himself. Uh, green going for Tier 4. Okay, nice. Nice little synergy there. And Tier 4 going down for Teal as well. Teal being the one that went tier 1, tier 2, tier 4, so spending a little bit more fuel than needed. But he does have himself a pack gun, so I mean, he did put his tier 2 to use, I suppose. AT gun getting recruited. We see another call in right on top of all of it. What it is, I don't know, but it looks like a strafing run right on top of the troops. Gets the suppression off on the guards and the conscripts. The AT gun moves out of the way. Everything actually gets suppressed here by the strafing run, but the mortars and uh, heavy weapons are able to continue the uh, the assault. Mortar shots flying into the center. The Grants trying to capture 410 points for the Soviets, 402 for the Germans. So it's pretty dead on uh, dead even on uh, victory points. But as far as armor goes, we have tier four down for Brew, and which is orange, and that's about it. He calls himself a Katusha. Got tier four as well going down for purple. But not much else. We'll see what tanks get called in. But yeah, I mean... Soviets still don't have a lot of vehicles. They do have a lot of infantry spattered around the center. So it's hard to uh, to break the lines. On the right-hand side, we see the uh, Panzer IV and a Flak Panzer running into the lines of infantry. The AT gun still stolen, getting chased down by those conscripts, not being able to kill it. We'll probably kill it eventually, but uh, the Flak Panzer is nearby. Mortars also nearby. Guard rifle opening up on the uh, on the on the uh, troops. AT nade does go off on the flag panzer, getting a crit on the engine. The uh, Panzer IV comes in for a crushing pass and does not manage to get the crush. The uh, flag panzer going to be going down to the guard rifle. The guard rifles are focusing them down. A grenade goes down and it looks like it actually killed the uh, flag panzer. I don't think it did, but it actually looked like it. And the AT gun does get recruited by uh, Purple, so he is uh, in range. Sets up. The Panzer IV moves out of the way and crosses the uh, the railway to uh, to make it back to safety. On the left-hand side, we have another Panzer IV trying to get behind the lines. Maxim machine guns in this, in this house just popping out as a Broombot hits the field for green. Again, nothing so far on the field for these players. We have two Katushas on the field for orange. Those Katushas are not going to really help out too much against those tanks. There's not a lot of infantry for the uh, Germans to uh, shoot at, so not entirely sure I agree with those, and a couple of C-85s here would help. AT gun getting uh, burned alive here by something. Brumbar opening up. 
Takes a lot of damage as it did get marked, but uh, fortunately though it does go down. Uh, I mean the AT gun goes down uh, for the Soviet players. They are not able to pick up the kill. Panzer IV moving in for a pass. More shots landing all over the place. And a plane crashes in the middle of nowhere. Not actually doing too much damage to anything, so uneventful, I suppose. Panzer IV continues to push forward, gets right behind all those mortars. The mortars are forced to retreat. One mortar gets taken out. The uh, one to a linear mortar does get itself out of there. AT guns and 18-8s go off, get the Panzer IV, and the Panzer IV is down. The uh, strafing run here right on top of... The, uh, the German troops kills them all, essentially, as the uh, assault grenadiers just have easy pickings, and they're going to go capture that point. Right-hand side, another Katusha for purple, so nobody's actually deciding to build any tanks from their Tier 4s. They're just getting Katushas. Tier 4 going down for poop player as well. Orange is uh, already with Tier 4. Red has not gotten any additional tech just yet. And the uh, strafing run getting right on top of another Maxim machine gun forces them to back up. Katusha's flying into the center. We have a Panther on the field for Teal with a Grand Squad there for support. The uh, Guard Squad in this uh, warehouse is not going to be able to stay alive too long. The uh, Assault Grenadier Squad does end up dying. Broomba up in the north still getting repaired. And more fuel cache is getting laid down for the uh, the purple side. So we see another, two, another Katusha. So four Katushas on the field. So that is a lot of artillery power. And they're able to, you know, do a lot of damage that way. But... They're, they don't have any response to these tanks. The uh, guard rifles and AT guns are not going to last too long. But they are, well, doing a very good job, in fact. AT gun goes off. The uh, guard rifles in the uh, warehouse take a shot, and down goes the flak panzer. Over on the uh, right-hand side, we have another strafing run right on top of that mortar, it looks like. Light artillery barrage. The uh, mortar dodges the first burst. Manages to dodge for the most part the second, and the third lands right on top of it and it dies. Even the plane shoots a little bit and notices, wait, there's nobody, I shouldn't really keep on shooting, so there it goes. Mortar gets kill killed up there. Panther over on the right hand side running into some guards. Ah, excuse me, needed a drink. Takes care of one guard, second guard gonna be going down as they're not really able to do much. PTR rest rifles dropped all over the place. And Maxim machine gun as well, so these uh, grenadiers could potentially pick it up, but well, we'll see. More Panzer force on the field, Opal Blitzes as well, she's moving around. Increasing the resource income for the uh, Germans. Let's take a look at those resources. Holy whoa. Well, actually, that's not too different. So we got the Soviets with 38 and the Germans with 47. Okay, yeah, that's significant. <laughs> 47 fuel. And 62 munitions. 20 more munitions in total than the uh, Soviets. So yeah, that's actually quite a bit. More artillery barrages right on top of these warehouses that are trying to collapse the entire building, and they probably will. There goes one building collapsing. The second one will surely collapse in the next barrage. No, actually manages to dodge those last shots and it stays alive. Still has one guard rifle in there. Holding a building by himself, but that's about it. Building over here has collapsed. This one is actually still you know, still standing, but Katusha is over to the right hand side throwing barrages at nothing, not really being able to kill too much. As there's not a lot of infantry on the field for the uh, Soviet, uh, for the Germans I mean. Broombar pushing forward supported by some Panzer Grenz. Shots fly, a lot of damage going on to the uh, Soviet infantry. Soviet Maxim machine guns getting targeted by something. What is it going to be? Bombing runs, artillery, light artillery, but misses, so they're fine. And we have a conscript squad behind the lines running into uh, an MQ-42. Assault Grenz squads, assault grenades getting tossed, and Panzer force moving in to clear them out. Broombar's pretty much forward. We do have an ISU. An ISU on the field for Square. Square is the one that did not go for any tech. He only went for Tier 2. So he's uh, going to be providing the ISUs, but ISU is not going to be able to do much if it doesn't have any additional tanks to be supported by. Its power is in its range and the damage that it can provide, but, well, 
With only Katusha's in the field, that's not really going to be uh, too much. There is an SC-85 on the field for uh, Poop players, so I suppose that is something. Shot goes off from the SC-85. Shot goes off. Ooh, that Panzer IV got obliterated. Panzer IV moving in on the side. Artillery barrage right on top of the SU-85. Panzer IV moving for the ISU. The ISU going to take a shot directly at it. There it goes, doing some damage. The SU-85 getting right, turned around, and getting some shots off on that Panzer IV. The um, Panzer IV loses its weapon and moves out of the way. The ISU still stands, getting some shots off on those Grens. So you can see the impressive power of it. Bombing run right on top of the SU-85, getting a crew shock. The Panzer IV running away, barely staying alive. As we do have an AT gun back here. I mean, two AT guns back here, but they're not really able to do much. And the Panzer IV makes it out. Another Panzer IV moves up, getting some shots off on that SU-85. SU-85 about to fall. The ISU unable to really take out that Panzer IV quickly enough. AT gun supporting as well. Panzer IV goes out of control and crashes onto the side of that, well, pretty much wall, essentially. And, uh... And there it goes. A lot of heavy cover now on this alleyway. Victory points, however, we do have a triple cap going for the German players. 316 points left for the Germans, 326 for the Soviets, so they still have the lead. We now have two Panthers moving in for the flank. SU-85 and AT gun getting some shots off on those Panthers. The Panthers getting heavily damaged. ISU getting some shots off at a distance. Nice direct hit there on that Panther, but the ISU is now on its own. No additional tanks for support. One SU-85 was not really enough against what the Germans were going to bring in. And the Tiger gets right on top of the ISU. ISU trying to get some kills on that Panther. The Panther trying to run away. Can the ISU actually get a kill before it goes off? Shot goes off from the AT gun. The AT gun actually finishes that one off. Another shot goes off on the Panther. The Panther taking a lot of damage. AT gun gets decrewed, however, so it's not going to be able to finish it off. And the ISU goes down as well. KB-1 getting called in for Brew, so at least there's something now. One of the Katushas ended up going down. I believe this is... No, that's actually an SU-76. Uh, but it is down. We see another SU-85 getting called in for orange. At least now he has that. SU-85 on the right-hand side for purple. So finally we start seeing uh, Soviet uh, armor hitting the field. KV-1 running into the Tiger. Not exactly what it wants to run into because it's, gun. it's not really that strong. Won't be able to do too much damage to a Tiger. If there was an AT gun nearby for support, like these two, getting shots off on the Tiger, well, they, uh, they'd be fine. However, the uh, Tiger is just getting a circle strafe on that KV-1. KV-1, fortunately, though, does have a heavy armor, so it's able to take a lot of punishment and, you know, survive for a while. T-3485 is getting called in for, uh, for poop. Getting a lot of damage down on that Tiger. The Tiger continues to shoot the, uh, chase the KV-1. AT guns not setting themselves up already. Come on, just set them up and get some shots off on that Tiger. Tiger now getting shot off on the rear armor. Manages to take out that uh, KV-1. And then it dies. Shots into the center from the Katushas. Getting a lot of damage. Those Pioneers are getting just riddled. The uh, Panther. Oh, that building collapses completely. But actually, they stay alive, so that's actually quite nice for them. Tiger on the field for blue as well. More Tigers getting called in. Green, green replacing his Tiger quite immediately. And we see the SU-85s moving into the center. So yeah, at least now the uh, Soviets have their armored support. Panther in the center getting some shots off on those T-3485s. Not actually getting any damage on them, unfortunately. There it goes. Finally, damage goes in. SU-85 behind it, able to provide a lot of fire support. That Panther is going to take a lot of damage. It is getting repaired. SU-85 focusing it down, and there goes the Panther. Panther explodes. More shots go off. We see another SU-85 moving over to the left-hand side as the AT guns do get decrewed. Tiger is on the field. However, it's getting shot at from the SU-85 at a distance. Maxim machine guns, all three of them trying to hold this line, these Grens, and artillery field officers doing quite a bit of smoke barrage right on top of breaking the line aside to the SU-85. Center map, we have the T-34-85s. One taking quite a bit of punishment, actually backing off. The SU oh, there's going to be a bombing run? No, light artillery barrage. They need to get those tanks out of there. Managing to dodge quite a bit. T-34-85 almost moving itself into the range of the artillery barrage. But yeah, the tanks actually dodge that quite nicely for the most part. They don't take too much damage. Tiger moving in for a flank on this SU-85. It is supported by another SU-85 and two T-34s. So this Tiger is in a little bit of trouble. The SU-85 managing to turn its sights and get itself right on the ass of that Tiger. The Tiger moves around 
and goes for essentially a strafing run. T3045 on pursuit. Could essentially just go for a ram right now on the tiger, maybe try to get the crit. It's gonna die. It dies and doesn't manage to uh, be utilized. Keep, all, keep that in mind always. You can always just go for a suicidal run, or a ram I should say, in the end if you're not able to uh, get... You know, if it's not gonna survive and it wasn't in that situation. Tiger taking a lot of damage in the rear armor, has three SU-85s, are shooting at it, loses his main gun. This SU-85 has it easy. Shot flies at a distance and actually kills it, so this SU-85 no longer has anything to kill. Tiger and Panzer IV on the left-hand side, running into that other T-3045, supported by one SU-85. T-3045 goes down, the Panzer IV getting shot at from the SUs. Uh, the other pink SU-85 turning itself around. Second one turning around as well. Panzer IV goes down, the Tiger is sitting there. We have another Tiger getting called in. A lot of Tigers on the field, Red right side, Flag Panzer and Tiger moving around as well as we have an SU-85 defending this zone by itself with Katusha's there for support. Panther in the center, essentially behind the lines, surrounded by SU-85s, however the SU-85s are not set up in a position where they can actually shoot at them. So the uh, Panther will be able to get it out and actually gets a kill on one of the SU-85s as the Tiger moves into support. Left hand side, more SU-85s just falling, we see uh, Poop's SU-85 up in the north just caught behind the lines against the Tiger. It is Veteran C2, so it's actually able to do quite a bit of damage and doing quite well, but the Tiger will probably be able to finish it off. Set SU-85 over here took a lot of damage and is moving back. SU-85 on the right decides to abandon its post and move into the center to support. As the Tiger over here gets itself behind, this SU-85 goes down as we expected. AT gun getting surrounded, getting flanked. This uh, T-3045 actually survived, but uh, Blue decides that it is not even worth it. It's going to destroy it. And there he goes. SU-85s for Orange are back here, not really supporting in the fight. They could have actually used them in this engagement. Two additional SU-85s would have done quite a bit of damage and quite a bit of difference, but unfortunately no. SU-85 in the center running into the Tiger. The Tiger getting some shots at it, but also getting shot at. Quite a bit of damage goes from the SU-85s. And the Katusha's fighting to support, but, you know, not really doing too much. And the Panther gets a flank on that SU-85, so as that SU-85 is gone, SU 85s over here getting shot at. The Katusha runs away. One has a heavily damaged engine. That's actually a destroyed engine, so it really can't move. Uh, the uh, Tiger moves in for a strafing run. Gonna get right behind that SU 85 and kill it. The Katusha still needs to run away a little bit more. And the Katushas over here are really the only things left. We see the Germans now dominating the center. Victory points down to 124 for the Soviets. They did manage to cap a victory point in the center for a little while, but we see the Germans now collecting that for themselves. SU-85 over here also got abandoned, so this means the Germans could get themselves a free tank. And an SU-85 in the Germans' hands is very, very deadly, very powerful. Not something you want to deal with as a Soviet. And, uh, yeah... Tiger, just moving around, patrolling this SU-85, you know, manages to intimidate it and get it out of the way, but not before it killed its friend. Poop gets himself another SU, moving it into the side. Katushas are all the way back in the base. We have an SU-85 for purple, still alive. Got, bra got brought back to the base to repair. It does have a combat engineer squad nearby. They could help in the repairs, but he is not. And it is not like he has anything else in the field that is currently doing much, so there you go. So SU's on the left, trying to hold the line. They run into the broom bar. That broom bar has t 32 kills to its name, three of them being vehicles. What vehicles, I don't know. SU-85 shoots it into the side, and uh, the broom bar stops, realizing, hey, he shot me. Can you Tigers come and deal with this, please? And three Tigers are now against two SU-85s as a broom bar actually gets behind the rear armor. SU-85 goes down very quickly. House collapses, and... There's a combat engineer squad with a Shrek in front of them that they're not even picking up. That is the nature of 44s, though. It does feel a lot more chaotic and a lot of things that you would expect to not happen in 1v1s and things to be overlooked. A lot of them do get overlooked here. It is a lot easier in 4v4s to kill squads uh, than it is in uh, 1v1s because there's so much going on that a lot of times, you know, the attention is not even where... Sometimes your your attention is not even with your units as you're maybe just looking at a fight or something. So the SU-85 now getting beset by two Tigers. AT gun there for support, getting some shots off on the lead Tiger. But the lead Tiger is now behind the SU-85. SU-85 going to be going down. We do see a fragmentation bomb right on top of the AT gun. The AT gun turns around, 
gets barraged down to two men. Gonna be lo lost, and there it goes. S-85 goes down. We have more Tigers, more Panthers, everything all over the place. KV-1 on the field for Orange, another S-85 on the field for Purple, and uh, Scout Car. Yes, that's exactly what they needed. And the Soviets are done for. They have 17 points left. They're not going to be able to last much longer here. And, well, even if they didn't have the victory points to kill them, look at all the German tanks right on top of the base. We do see a Tiger that got the crew. Let's slow down those frame rates because it's killing our machine here. But, yeah. GG, says Lupito. Down to two points. And that is going to be all she wrote. Rockets flying in that direction. That's actually kind of cool. Let me see if I can get a closer look. Yeah, look at those rockets just flying into the tanks, but not really going to do much. It'll damage them, but yeah, not too much. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.